Good morning! It's so lovely to see you guys and today I wanted to carry on with our galaxy painting but also I wanted to talk to you a little bit about skill and practice. I've been noticing that um, sometimes maybe I rush through some of the techniques a little bit or um, need to go back over them again so I wanted to slow down the galaxy today and show you how to get your galaxy background looking in a way that you're going to be happy with it to move on to the next step which is really makes today all about skill and the thing about skill um, because people often confuse it with technique and they're like, oh, I don't have the right technique. But you have a technique. You just maybe don't have the skill with that technique yet. So the only way you can get that skill is by practice. So today we're going to go back into our background, our galaxy background, and we're going to really take a look at uh, the background and make sure it's what we want. The great thing about watercolors, and I maybe haven't said this enough, is that some of the decisions you make on the paper are fixable. I don't like to um, use the word mistake if you make a mistake on the paper, um, but uh, I like to just look and think, if this isn't how you want it to look, I want to give you some kind of ways to change the way it looks so that it's more in line with what you want it to look like and then that becomes part of your skill about using these techniques so we're going to get started i'm going to say good morning as your names pop up if you don't mind especially if you're saying good morning to me as well so good morning steve where are you this morning um and how is the weather because today is absolutely glorious on the gloucester and sharpness canal um it's so sunny and beautiful I think I'm going to go for a walk after I leave you guys this morning because it's just so lovely. Uh, good morning, Suzanne, and good morning, Pauline. Morning, Jackie. All right, so we are looking at our galaxy from yesterday. I'm not happy with my background. Um, it's not exactly what I want it to, to, to be like, and so I want to show you what you can do to get it more how you want it to look. Okay. You're not, first of all, you're not going to be able to fix this background if your ego is involved. Because your ego is going to look at this painting and it's going to say, we need to stop painting, we need to protect our precious ego, and this isn't for me. So that is the first point of why I always say you have to leave your ego at the door because it tries to sabotage you. It's fantastic if you're going for a job interview because it's like, I get this job because I'm the best person or whatever else you need your ego for. Um, but in the case of creating, you can't employ your ego. All right, so we're going to have a look at this one. Morning, Mayor. Um, this is too light. And it's a little bit too patchy if you see. What you want to look at with your, your um, galaxy painting is you want to make sure that it looks like a galaxy. You want to make sure it looks like a night sky and not a sunset. And this is a different concept for us because we've done sunsets before and maybe we've laid the paint like a sunset. I kind of feel like mine's halfway there but it still looks a little bit sunsetty. It's a little bit too light, and my I want my colors to be darker and fuller. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. We were gonna do the stars today, but I think it's just best that we stop, take a step back, and get a galaxy background that we really love, um, and I think that's the important thing as well. Okay, so what you wanna do, and here's the trick, is I have a... Um, a larger paintbrush, so this is a number six paintbrush, and I've got some clean water just out of out of shot here, and I'm going to put my brush again. It's a sable paintbrush, so it's not going to hold an incredible amount of water, which because again we don't want this drenched, we don't want it turning into mud, um, and I'm going to look at the lighter areas, say over here, and I'm going to try to darken those. And what I want to do is I'm going to lay. The water onto the page 
and that underneath layer is going to get slightly activated. That's the word. <laughs> if you've been following for a couple of weeks, I couldn't find the word activate. Um, that layer is going to get activated slightly. It's dried enough to be hopefully a little bit resistant. So that bit is wet now. I'm going to go in with my Prussian blue, with a darker blue, but it's a it's still a transparency. It's a middle of the road transparency because I don't want to go in with a pure blue um, because it'll be too dark. And then I'm going to dot the paint in where it needs to go. Then get some more clean water on your paintbrush and sneak up to the layer you just laid. And that's going to make that blue layer, that's going to be a bit darker now, but the layer is also going to run through the water so that you don't end up with harsh lines. We don't want any harsh lines. So again, take some clean water onto the page. You don't want to puddle, you just want it to be shiny. Take some Prussian blue or some purple. Make sure it's a transparency that is a middle of the road transparency so I usually kind of just wipe it somewhere else. You'll have most of it on the paintbrush but if you wipe it there you can see that it's the transparency that you want. Dip it in, um, dot it onto your page, take your clean water and sneak up on anywhere that you think might end up having a bit of a, a line so that there's no distinct line. And we're going to go across the page like that. Um, the great thing about this is you're going to keep some of your underneath layer, like I just think that's beautiful. but. It's such a beautiful sunset moment here, this purple and yellow. Um, I made a bit of a mistake yesterday with my yellow. I got a bit excited. Um, if you remember, I dotted the yellow everywhere. <laughs> and the yellow just loves to spread out. Well, the yellow that I use does. So if you find that you're getting too many lines in your painting, it's probably because you're not sneaking up with it enough um, with some water around the outside. So when you lay it, it could be a few things. It could be the paper you're using isn't, um, isn't allowing the watercolour to settle enough. It could be that it's um, not good enough quality paper. It could be that the paints you're using are don't have the, the right amount of pigment in them, so you maybe could be using um, uh, more beginner level paints. Um, could be that we were going too fast. And I think it's really good to do a, um, a, a kind of an extra day like this where we just darken our image just so that you can see that it happens to everybody. You know, I woke up this morning and I was looking at it and I was thinking, oh, if we put some stars on this today, it's not going to pop enough. It's just not going to be it. And... Um, so I was thinking I really got to show you how to darken it up and also putting that extra top layer on is going to um, make it so that the top layer is a little bit more blended. You know, when you look, it, when you think of classic galaxy pictures, um, they, they do have some specific colours in the sky, but sometimes they're a little bit more blended. So that's kind of what we're going for as well. And again, I'm, I'm going for... Um, adding an extra layer and not going in too heavy with the colours but at the same time these are not a light transparency. They're not completely opaque. 
if you think back to last week when we made our transparencies, these would be the ones that were in the middle of the page. And the other reason that you have to leave your ego at the door when you're practicing skill is because your ego will tell you that it's your fault and that you have missed something or you have done something wrong and it's very blamey. It's like, oh, I don't have the right amount of skill. It's like, well, no, you don't have the right amount of skill. That's why you're practicing. <laughs> I don't know that you can ever have the right amount of skill. I definitely don't. Like I practice every day. Um, but I've got to the point where I'm really happy to practice. I really love it because every time you discover something new, even when you think you're not going to discover something new, um, something new pops up. If you practice watercolour with your ego and you let it say things like, you're not good enough, you've missed something, then that's going to be detrimental to your creating. So that's why we leave our ego at the door. And it's quite fun. Like if you really, if you really monitor what your brain is saying to you when you are kind of painting, you want your brain to be talking to you and saying things like, oh, that's an interesting color. And, oh, that didn't spread how I thought it was going to spread. Or, oh, how, how would I change that? Oh, that, that looks interesting, but it's not the color I want. Um, and you want your brain to be fully engaged with problem solving, but problem solving in a creative way, not protecting. Your ego will protect you, and that's not what you want. You don't need protection from your creative process. Um, you need to engage in it. So I've kind of found that a bit helpful. And because my paper's all still damp, I can go in with a little bit of a uh, softer blue and I can just dabble it in little bits. With my paintbrush, I'm getting the surface area of my paintbrush as flat as possible. I'm not going in with a tip, I'm going in with a side. And I'm just... Um, letting the side of the paintbrush visit, <laughs> visiting the, the section I need it to stop on. Again, we're not creating a super wet piece of paper. However, if you find that your paint isn't blending enough, then you need to message me and let me know what kind of paper you are using. And that is how we practice skill. We don't look at it and think, oh, I haven't done it right. We look at it and we go, okay, well, this isn't dark enough or it's not blended enough. Or it's not exactly what I wanted it to be. So we're going to try it with a little bit of extra water or we try it with extra color. And then I'm just going to go in because I'm just a little bit worried that it's still not dark enough. And I'm going to go in with a bit of my gray and take some of this side bit over here. Now you have to be careful applying more paint to a wet layer because what you can do sometimes is you can actually take up the work you've done um, with the paintbrush and it ends up not being darker at all. So I'm going to pause there on this darker layer and that is going to dry. We're going to monitor that and see how well it dries and celebrate the fact that we tried to do some creative work to make our painting look a little bit more like how we imagined it to look or how we wanted it to look. I'm not calling it a mistake. I did also want to talk to you. Um, morning Kimberly from Canada, which Canada's on my 
my to-do list. I desperately want to go to Canada. I have a friend in Canada and um, I hear great things about it so I would love to go there. Um, I wanted to tell you today as well, lots of people have been messaging me about the offer that I was talking about, my watercolour prompts, and I have managed to get everything together so that tomorrow at 10.30 I'm going to tell you all about it. I have put together some uh, bonuses just for you guys, just for people inside the group. Um, I also talked to a few of you guys about doing some little uh, Christmas present bonuses that'll just be for you guys um, inside the group as well. So if you love the idea of creating but you don't know where to start, um, if you enjoy the structure of creating but you don't like to follow rules necessarily, then this is everything that you need in one place and I'm super excited about it because I wish when I had started creating, when I started painting, I wish that I had found a program like this because it would have sped along my creative development um, because we're going to talk about watercolour prompts, we're going to talk about um, mindset, like what we need to do to get to be creating how we want to create and we're going to spend some time together and you're going to see a big increase in how you do create. I'm super excited about it. I am definitely going to give you all the details tomorrow. I just was a little bit excited and, and gave you them early but everything finalized tomorrow so make sure you are listening tomorrow at 10 30 because I think I'm going to have to make some of the bonuses limited. Um, so I'll explain everything at 10 30 tomorrow and um, yeah it'll be super exciting. You're um, giving me a heart if you think that is really exciting and um, and then, um, yeah, then I'll know. And the hearts come up on the screen and I love to see them. Oh, thank you. Um, tomorrow, your homework, as well as me explaining the course to you, is um, make sure your galaxy is where you want it to be. Please message me. I have completely got your back in this creative process. So if you're stuck with something, I'm pretty sure there is a message button on the group and you can just message me and you know talk about it and also you know I know some of you have done it publicly as well but if you're a little bit um, worried about where you're stuck at but like I said have fun with this and we can troubleshoot anything together and um, tomorrow we are definitely going on with our stars because that really makes it pop and then we've got some background to add another day so if you're watching this on catch up or on replay then um, this is going to be awesome for you and it's going to look really stunning so I will see you tomorrow um yeah so thanks so much for spending some time with me today hope you're all well and go and enjoy the sunshine if you are anywhere near me and if you're somewhere else I hope you have a lovely rest of the day bye